Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the July meeting of the Portsmouth Police Commission. We're going to get started here very soon. I invite you to take a seat. And we'll officially call the meeting to order and ask Karen to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Okay. Cool. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you so much. And now I'd like to request a motion to suspend the full agenda and move up item number one, swearing in ceremony under the chief's report. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, chief, we're gonna turn it over to you. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Tonight we'll be representing our newest Portsmouth Police Officer, Ms. Megan McBride, if you wanna come up here, Megan. Megan began her uh, career with the Portsmouth Police Department on May 22nd. She's originally from Ridgewood, New Jersey and attended Bergen Community College. She's also currently working toward an associate's degree in political science from Southern New Hampshire University. Megan Kunz, who also were from after working four years in uh, Northampton, and we are delighted to have her. So if you raise your hand, you'll repeat after me. I, state your name, the above named appointee, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially just discharge and perform all duties incumbent on me as a police officer, constable, and night watchman of said city of Portsmouth according to the best of my ability, agreeable to the rules and, regu reg rules and regulations of the Constitution <laughs> and laws of the state of New Hampshire. And laws of the state. So help me God. So help me God. Okay, and then I'll read this. By virtue of the authority vested in me through the police commission in RSA 105-C, trusting in your integrity and fidelity, do by here hereby constitute and appoint you a police officer, constable and night watchman of said city of Portsmouth, with all the power and authority and subject to all the duties and liabilities provided by law. Congratulations. it for our ceremony thanks everybody for coming you're more than welcome to stay for our rest time meeting if you okay we can do that
So thank you to Officer Megan McBride. Congratulations. We appreciate your service and willingness to dedicate your energy to Portsmouth. Thank you. Congratulations to your whole family. And now we will move on to item three on our agenda and ask for an approval to accept the minutes from the meeting held on May 16th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll open the meeting to public comment. <laughs> Seeing no one here for public comment, we'll close the public comment portion of the agenda. And now we'll move on to Police Commission agenda items, starting with a facilities update. Um, first, before we get into the public safety facility planning work, anything specific on the restoration of the current facility? I think we're still in the same place. Right? We still have one last project to tackle with the dispatch center, and that's kind of been on hold uh, probably th through the end of the summer and for staffing purposes, and hopefully we'll get that going again in the fall. Uh, Chief, can you speak at all to the impact of the rain in June and July on the facility and how that's <laughs> affecting us here? Uh, well, I think everybody's aware we've had a lot of humidity, and that's been part of our problem with the mold that's come back here and uh, the facility still has some HVAC concerns that until until they're uh, fixed and replaced will not uh, alleviate our moisture problem so because of that even some of the areas that we have just recently remediated we're still having sweat and pipes which is leaving watermarks um, but we, we have brought in additional um, dehumidifiers uh, and we're addressing the problem so that we can try to prevent the mold from coming back again. Great, thank you. And obviously for those watching at home in light of the next discussion which relates to uh, planning for public fa safety facility needs in the future, consistently having to deal with mitigation of water and moisture in the facility remains a very significant concern since it doesn't appear that the weather is going to cooperate anytime soon. All right, moving on, and I get, I will ask uh, Commissioner Coyle if you wouldn't mind leading the discussion on where things stand with the facility planning work. Yes, thank you. So last week we began the public uh, process of working towards um, community engagement with respect to um, to figuring out the next steps towards a, a modern police facility, and so. Um, some of the community are some of our uh, working group presented uh, demonstrating there are seven sites that we're considering at this point and um, just putting that out to the public so that everybody can be made aware of what we're looking at included in that those seven sites are renovations um, the hurdles of renovations are significant because of the gross displacement that would be involved as part of the uh, the process but everything is being evaluated and looked at so with those seven sites what we're doing is there's a rubric or um, so that we can rank everything um, and I believe that rubric is up on the website so the community people yes yeah, so everybody can uh, anyone from the public can look at it and um, see what the different factors are for the evaluation process so Going forward, the working group's going to evaluate the seven different sites and we'll have further community meetings to discuss the rubric and where how things are shaking out. Thank you, and I just wanna reiterate for folks who may be watching at home, uh, there was an article in today's uh, Portsmouth Herald and Seacoast Online outlining the seven different proposed facilities that will be, or locations for a potential facility that are currently being evaluated. So check, check out that article uh, and perhaps we can also post that on the site so that people can access information about where those locations are. Uh, and we, we definitely encourage community input and feedback on the different options that are currently being considered. So take a look at that and, uh, and definitely weigh in when you have a chance. 
Commissioner Scher, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, just uh, one thing. It uh, it came up at the uh, at the meeting last week. I, I also attended. Um, what we're trying, what we're looking at is a, when we say a modern police facility, facility that will be good for the city for 40 years or so, not uh, not just the next 10 years, not just one that meets the current needs. And I think that's that's a really important consideration. Thank you. Great point. So again, for folks at home, um, seven different locations currently being evaluated, including the the renovation of this current facility. Uh, check out those options and, and please weigh in when you have a chance. Um, moving on to community priorities. Uh, the first item is school safety. Uh, Chief, I wonder if you can share whether there's school safety planning or preparations being done during the summer months as we anticipate kids coming back to school in September. So as a routine procedure that we do is we meet with the school and we talk about procedures and obviously towards the end of the school year we had a lot of uh, relative incidents there um, about school threats and so we've had an active role in teaching the schools that's been ongoing and will continue on uh, before the kids come back to school again we'll sit down with schools school staff and make sure that all our protocols in place and it's kind of a, a working document that continues to progress I think we addressed a lot of it towards by the end of the school year last year but again, we'll continue to move forward with our plans that are already in place and improve on things that maybe we're falling short on at the end of the last season. Great, and can you share anything more about um, the, the threat that the community was aware of last spring that closed the school for a day? Is there anything that makes sense to, in terms of an update uh, for folks? Uh, the only update is, is, you know, it's at the U.S. Attorney's Office. The, they're working on it there's uh, been meetings to prepare whether or not it's going to go to trial or whether or not there will be a plea agreement in place so uh, it's, it hasn't been forgotten and the attorney u.s attorney's office is, is continually to work on that case and the suspect is incarcerated correct um, <coughs> any other questions on school safety talk um, a reminder that august 1st is national night out so for folks at home uh, if you haven't yet been a part of National Night Out, uh, I hope your neighborhood is planning to be this year and you are able to join. Uh, the department will be out in, in force, engaging with the neighborhoods across the city on August 1st from 6 to 8. Uh, and I know fellow commissioners are going to be there as well and, and folks from throughout the city, uh, city hall. So hope you'll, you're able to join August 1st from 6 to 8, National Night Out. Mark your calendars. Anyone else want to weigh in on National Night Out? I think this way it's a great night for, uh, for members of the community to meet our officers. Uh, we'll put a lot, there'll be a lot of officers out in, out in the different neighborhoods. Uh, unfortunately, I will be away attending a police conference, so I will be missing my first National Night Out. But you'll be able to meet lots of other members of the department and uh, city staff, uh, and it's a great event. We encourage everybody to get involved and come out. Great. Thanks, Chief. And now I'll turn it over to you, Commissioner Scher, for a report back from the body camera conference you were able to attend earlier this summer. Um, about two, two, maybe three weeks ago, uh, I attended with Captain uh, Keevney, uh, the uh, a body cam conference put on by the Police Executive Research Forum, uh, which is, uh, it turns out, a very good organization that researches uh, uh, a variety of police issues. They had, uh, they had put out, oh, about 10 years ago, a model policy for body camps in the earlier phase when body camps were just becoming new. And this conference was to see if it needed updating and to talk about important topics related to it. Uh, I came away with uh, several impressions. Number one, uh, body camps are moving forward around the country. Eighty percent of all the the largest police departments have body cams, and overall about 50 percent of departments have body camps. Uh, for example, in, in New Hampshire, uh, Laconia, Nan uh, Nashua, Manchester, Goffstown, Dover, Rochester, uh, all have uh, body camps. Um, the, uh, the second thing I came away with was uh, at the very end of the day, it was a day-long conference, at the very end of the day, the MC and executive director of the 
Police Executive Research Forum asked this question. Attending, attending this conference were police chiefs from around the country, uh, head of federal and state agencies, uh, many of whom had already have body cams and others who were in the process and others who were thinking about adopting them. And the, uh, the Chuck Wexler, the, uh, the executive director, asked this question. He said, those of those, you police chiefs who have, <coughs> um, have adopted body camps, if we were to take them away today, uh, how many of your officers would be happy? Raise your hand. And none of them raised their hand. Uh, how many of your officers would be mad? and all of them raised their hand. The idea uh, uh, that was very current was that uh, police officers have tended in the past and currently to be somewhat resistant to body cams, uh, a little bit defensive of their purpose. But once they get in place, they're incredibly supportive. They love them. Um, and that was, a, that was a really positive thing to hear. Uh, the other thing is we learned uh, a good bit about good ways to implement body cams, really important to us as, as, as we begin that process. Um, how to do training, how to phase in body cams rather than do it all at once, and came back with some good details in that regard. All, all in all, an excellent conference. Thank you very much for attending and uh, for the report back. Commissioner Quell, anything you want to add? Just that um, we have uh, body-worn cameras in our CIP. So um, hopefully we can, we're looking to that um, in the upcoming year. <coughs> and, and adoption of them are, adoption of body-worn cameras are actively part of union negotiations currently. Uh, so ongoing work happening to make body cameras in Portsmouth a reality. Okay, moving on. Anything else on body-worn cameras? Chief, anybody? Um, number three under the police commission agenda items are is the topic of the approved budget and key priorities. And Chief, I wonder if you could outline, uh, given the current budget that's been approved, key highlights for folks at home. So the the main key highlight of the new budget is the the one additional position of a new social worker that will be coming on uh, shortly in the in the fall. We hope to have them hired and actively working with the police department to help us. Uh, deal with some of the mental health and addiction issues in the community and social other social issues that we uh, come across throughout our work. The other addition is we uh, got a dispatcher's position back that we had um, <laughs> temporarily lost last, last year, not intentionally, um, but we put the position back into the, uh, the budget. And other than that, it's kind of just a... Um, Status quo. Status quo, but those are the works. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Status quo budget <laughs> from last year. They wanted to keep the tax rate down so there were no new initiatives. We had quite a significant increase in like our um, computer service maintenance agreements, but other than that, it was pretty status quo. Um, thank you both. I, th I think it's worth highlighting because we did hear lots from the community in the last few years about the importance of engaging a social worker. Uh, as part of the community a policing approach that the department has implemented. And uh, so the, to me, in light of the existing constraints, being able to hire a social worker is a terrific, uh, terrific step forward. And I look forward to having that position filled and working on behalf of the community. Uh, and I think uh, I second that. Um, I, you know, I, I, the, the, the goal for the, the department and for a good community policing uh, department is to have a diversity of responses to uh, people I amidst a uh, mental health crisis. And, uh, you know, with the, uh, I think the department is really making a lot of progress. And this will, uh, the addition of a social worker will be a, a tremendous asset to the department. Commissioner Coyle? Just as it relates to some of our, uh, the new facility, a police facility that will accommodate those, that the aspects of having a social worker really accessible to the community, having community spaces, these are some of the things that we've been in discussions about in the working group, which is to create a facility that really does, um, it, it is reflective of community policing and having those spaces where community members can come in and 
meet with a social worker and not, you know, in a um, in a comfortable and um, sort of accommodating way. So this is a nice step with the social worker, and then we'll just keep hopefully building on that, which is the goal. That's an important point. Anything else on the budget, approved budget? All right, moving on to your agenda items, Chief. All right. I think the, well, we already swore in Officer Megan McBride. We're happy to have her and, you know, as part of our new 30 by 30 initiative of, of having the department made up of 30% women uh, by 2030 and having another female officer is helping us get to that goal. As I stated, uh, I'm heading to a conference. We have a Kalia conference coming up for, and we're up for our, our reaccreditation. So myself, uh, our accreditation ma manager, Kerry Waring, and uh, Lieutenant John Aubin from Professional Standards will be attending this conference. And the hopes, and I'm pretty confident that we're going to get our reaccreditation for to continue on with our, uh, as an accredited police department. So I got a brief report from uh, Kerry Waring. Um, during this conference that we will be attending, we will be required to answer a series of questions from the Colia panelists pertaining to any standard issues that were identified in the past three years of our file reviews. Uh, outside of the conference, the department has opened up a new assessment and the accreditation software, which is essentially a clean slate to document the current year's worth of accreditation documentation. This cumbersome task requires a transfer of hundreds of documents from the previous assessment to the new one and the department is on track and continues to maintain its compliance with over 400 standards of practice. So hopefully our, by our next meeting that we will come back with our award as accredited, successfully the accredited department. The next I will ask for, <clears throat> excuse me, a vote for you guys on a couple of donations the department received. A donation of four tickets to the members of the police department to attend the Street Life 400 event on August 15th, uh, which is the outdoor dinner that's being promoted by Plus with Dinner. Uh, Jim Foster is the senior vice president of Bank America, has do donated four tickets to the New Hampshire uh, to the police department for four members of the department to attend. I'm oh. That's going to request a motion. To I move accept. to accept the donation of four Street Life 400 tickets from Jim Foster for the Portsmouth Police Department and to forward to the City Council for their approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chief, before you go on to item B on this one, can you share how we might go about deciding who gets those tickets in the department? Are you thinking about lottery or? That's a good question. I haven't got that far yet. Okay. Uh, this just came in. Uh, and literally, as Jackie was typing up the agenda, um, but I think uh, we'll find a way to. Uh, one part of it is, is well, there's going to be a lot of officers actually working that detail, right? So we'll we'll see who's not working it and see who's available. Okay. Right. Thanks. The next one is a Target gift card in the amount of twenty five dollars from a Grateful Citizens for uh, that she she's donated for the use of the Postal Police Department. This was for services rendered by our officers to get the image of the hospital for treatment in which she was very thankful for the assistance that she received from our officers, specifically uh, Officer Stark, in helping her get in the care that she needed. I move to accept a gift card in the amount of $25 to uh, Target from a grateful citizen for use by the Portsmouth Police Department and to forward it to the City Council for their approval. Second. All in favor? Hi. Hi. Um, again, in, with something like this, Chief, can you share how uh, how you go about deciding? You know, does do those funds get allocated for things like office supplies, or how how do we decide what? I mean, this could them? be. We could literally. It's a well. It's two two targets specifically are there. It could be, you know, if we do a department barbecue or something for that matter, and we need uh, refreshments or paper plates or something yeah. for that matter that okay. we can use it for a department function. That makes sense. All right. Monthly traffic stats? 
My deputy is on vacation, so I will read these for him. Uh, May 2023, we had 831 motor vehicle stops, resulted in 52 summonses. Uh, we had 62 motor vehicle crashes with no injury and 7 motor vehicle crashes with injury. Now, going on to the June stats where there was 710 motor vehicle stops, 34 summonses, 78 motor vehicle crashes with no injury and 11 motor vehicle crashes with injury. And where I comment on that is we have an uptick in motor vehicle crashes. Uh, I think due to this part of it is due to the summertime and tourist season. Uh, also could be relevant to the weather because we've had a lot of rain, uh, more so than normal at this time of year. And with that on top of the influx of the amount of traffic. But again, you know we've done this several times as just plea for the uh, general public to slow down and pay attention. Uh, still a lot of people that are trying to drive in, in uh, uh, what, what distracted while they're looking at their phones um, and more imp importantly just slow down and be more aware of your surroundings uh, as the summer ticks up and I think we're successfully out of COVID and the world has returned back to normalcy there's a lot more vehicles on the road uh, people who we request to try to pay a little bit extra more attention um, yeah, the other thing I would say just especially at walking around the city a lot lately the construction on islington street there's construction throughout the city so uh let you know the residents who live here hopefully are modeling uh good you know good defensive driving and, and caution exercising caution be careful uh it's there's a lot going on on the roads right now we got to be careful uh, and uh, there's a push there's a highway safety message about uh, speed enforcement through you know all the state particularly in the seacoast region and all the local communities around here a again the number one complaint that we really receive is is speeders uh, so we are trying to be out there as much as we can doing enforcement uh, and we will continue to do that uh, but we again just asking people to please slow down yeah. drive safely thanks now on to the financial report um, we're in the process of closing FY23. Uh, currently, we show about a $400,000 surplus that we're returning, but after we get done with all of our journal entries and things like that, it's probably going to be closer to $500,000, all due to vacancies. Um, we've, we've had over five to six, seven vacancies at any one time, so um, that should hopefully uh, flush out to be about $500,000 that we return. Um, in terms of grants, we just received word from Rockingham County who administers the JAG, uh, Burn Memorial JAG grant. Um, and we qualify for $11,624, um, which we just uh, announced at the ops meeting. So we'll be looking to uh, see how we can best use those funds. Uh, we haven't qualified for the JAG grant in a long time. Uh, it's a good thing to qualify for the money, but it's based on your crime stats, so that's not a good thing. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll find a good use for those. Um, the Bulletproof Vest Grant was submitted for next fiscal year. Um, we put in for a lot of new hires because we have a lot of changeover in staff um, coming. Uh, the CERT team also received another allocation from the Department of Homeland Security for 14403 um, and Lieutenant Tondro is working on that to see what we're going to use those funds for. Um, we still have not received our ICAC application yet, still waiting on that. Um, but the ICAC Forensic Shield, which is funded through the state budget, um, uh, Lieutenant Kinsman had requested we get 500000 over two years, 250 each year. He requested an additional um, 300000 to go over the two years, and they ended up um, awarding $1.3 million for the ICAC program. So Eric's working diligently to, we have to rewrite our grant that we had already submitted to include those funds. Um, the CAD RMS system uh, was signed, the contract, on June 30th. Um, and Daisy is working with um, Central Square in reference to the implementation schedule on that. Um, it is going to be an 18 to 24 month implementation. Um, but if we signed by June 30th, they gave us an additional hundred and something thousand dollars off the price. So we got it signed. <laughs> um, strategic plan next 
meeting, we will present that, um, the chief will. Um, we'll do a PowerPoint presentation. And then on the grants, you had asked, uh, Commissioner Shaheen, you had asked in reference to competitive grants instead of the ones that we mm -hmm. were, were just doing. Um, if, like, we, we get constant solicitations. Um, but in terms of uh, our goals and objectives, if it doesn't fit with our goals and objectives for the strategic plan, um, we don't apply because we don't do that car before sure. the horse thing. But a lot of things, like just an example, if you, if we, you go on the COPS website, you know, they have active shooter grants, but then when you go in and look, it's always very picky. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's uh, training and technical assistance. Um, you have to be able to train 20,000 people, 20,000 other local um, law enforcement mm -hmm. agencies. So they're, they're very specific and very picky, um, unlike in years past when you could, it, it was a more broad um, thing. So we, we do look at these all the time. Um, on the state, uh, currently there's just two ARPA ones, um, and we, that's, we've already gotten money with those. Um, so we are constantly looking, um, but to, you, to do a new initiative takes a lot, and we're, we're so short on staff right now, but I'm sure once we get fully staffed, um, we can start thinking you know, more globally and, and thinking of um, new initiatives that we can implement and, and whatnot. Um. Out of curiosity, what was the final sticker price on the CAD RMS system? Um, it was just under 400000 but that's just for the core um, uh, software. We still have other softwares that are going to be piggybacking on that um, that we haven't gotten the full uh, cost yet on that. There's some for the fire department, some for us, some for the court system. Um, so it, it'll be probably up in the range of a million when we're done. And a reminder for people listening at home that uh, this system for managing uh, interactions between officers and members of the public has been tracked using a software tool that's now nearly 30 years old. Almost. Almost yep. 30 years old. Yep. Uh, and so it's been a very long time since this kind of investment in the technology has been made, and it will allow us to do all kinds of things relative to tracking encounter data and other things that we currently can no long, can't do with the current system, and we really can't even adequately service the current system because it's so dated and, and old. Um, do you and have a follow-up question? I, more of a comment. Um, uh, once it's in place, uh, it, it, as uh, uh, Commissioner Shaheen referred to, it allow us to collect a, a lot of mm -hmm. demographic data relating to encounters between police officers and citizens. And and Portsmouth will be one of the leading police departments in the state uh, in terms of uh, the commitment it's made through the community group uh, and the commission to gathering that and analyzing that kind of data. Commissioner Quill, do you have anything on that one? I don't. Okay. I just had a couple of follow-up. I was going to say, I just wanted to say one thing in reference to the price. Central Square um, purchased TriTech, and TriTech had purchased IMC. So if we, if that hadn't happened, if it hadn't been, you know, the successive thing, and they had, um, they've already, like, migrated data for somebody else, it would have been a lot more costly um, for us. But it worked out very well this time. Because <laughs> we can migrate all the data? I was going to say, gonna they've, already, they've already done it before yeah. um, into their system, so um, they were able to offer a significant discount. Um, plus, they own the system we currently have now. They own that, so it, it worked out well. So just a few, few follow-up questions on the report. Um, you mentioned, Karen, the 11000 plus or minus yep. uh, grant and that the way we're eligible for that is because of crime stats. Chief, can you speak to a specific stat or two relative to why we'd all of a sudden be eligible? I, well, I, I, I've seen the, the exact grant on what they're looking at, but I, overall I think just we would look at the overall crime rate across the board with, without getting specific in the individual type of crime. I, I mean, there's no specific crime that we've been having, I think, that jumps up off the radar to say like we have a problem here I think it's just kind of the general transition of crime rising yeah. or reporting mm -hmm. crimes um, and do you attribute some of that to the fact that there were fewer reported crimes during COVID or is that not true 
it could be part of that. I don't know, like, what they're looking at for over the amount of years of time that it's gone by. Uh, and it could be from, you know, back when COVID was there, there was nothing going on, and then yeah. now all of a sudden we're back to normal, saying not that our crime sets are higher than where they were pre-COVID, but they've risen significantly from where we were in COVID. Yeah. And then on the 1.3 million for ICAC, mm -hmm. I, I just didn't catch it. Did you say that that's coming through the Fed or through the no. state? No, actually um, when Lieutenant Gorella was here, um, he's the one that uh, went to the state legislature yes, I remember and asked that. for them to allocate budget money. And I guess there's a state law in, in terms of this too, in, in terms of funding these things. So it's through this, just the state okay. budget. That's okay. the state. That's and so state. when you say re, like recrafting the proposal, is the proposal that's needing to be re recrafted a federal proposal? Nope. It's, it's um, the state proposal. What they do is they ask for a proposal for the two years of the 500000 that is budget money. Yep. And now we'll recraft that to um, include, to include the, the new. And, and when we crafted that, we said that there was um, legislation before you know the body to, to vote on and that we would revise it once that got approved. Got it. So. I think what she, she's saying is when we proposed the 500000 we show, had to show how we were going to use the 500000 mm -hmm. and. We got 1.3 million, right. so which is more than what we. Right. <laughs> no, no, I understand that. So and now I, he's going to show how we're going to use the 1.3 million. Right. No, I understand with that. With new goals, and objectives, and all right. that sort of stuff. Well, and I mean the fact, just for people at home, again, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, which is led, uh, it's a statewide initiative. It's a task force that supports the entire state, but it's, it's, Most led out of, out of this police department so we have the responsibility of executing and administering it um, and so I it, it doesn't I'm actually happy to hear that we have these additional funds because given what we heard uh, not too long ago from Lieutenant Kinsman about the impact of right. the numbers Correct. and the rate at which children are being targeted online uh, clearly there's more resource needed in order to track down the significantly yeah. yes so um, Yes, this is not a windfall. It's going to be put no. to use aggressively, uh, which is necessary. I think it was just the, the increase of cyber tips that we've been, mm. they've been receiving has been significant. And I think just those numbers alone were a justification of why they balanced, gave them more, more money. And it's gone, off, gone up by over 100% consecutively in the last few years. So. And I was going to say, Lieutenant Kinsman has been trying to get an actual like permanent person, part-time person in each county, because yeah. um, right now he, he only has one, two, three, four, four or five counties covered. Um, so um, this will go toward that. Um, they work 25 to 30 hours a week, um, and it, it's steady because sometimes it's hard at another police station because um, everybody's shorthanded right. to have them do the overtime for the um, investigations. I mean, they do it, but right. it's it's difficult. Everybody's so short-handed, right? So this will go toward that. Um, and w one thing I've learned recently, which since we're on the topic of um, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, the latest terminology relative to child exploitation in this domain has is child sexual assault material, yep. CSAM. So when you hear that, you know, often people think pornography, but this, this is the more appropriate terminology because there's a wide range of what constitutes um, you know, inappropriate material targeted toward children. So um, anything else on the ICAC grant? Any questions? Uh, anything else, Karen, you want to share or report back on? Um, no, I think we're good. <laughs> Great. Well, I, we, we owe you a debt of gratitude, Karen, because A, I don't know how you you do it every year but to be able to supply a surplus back to the city almost to the tune of half a million dollars is remarkable uh, both closing out the fiscal year and advocating for the the budget priorities for the coming year so thank you very much for all that work um, all right anything else chief under your agenda items That's it. all right any other miscellaneous business all right, before we adjourn, just a reminder to folks at home, I know it's summer and everybody's uh, hopefully off enjoying some time with family, loved ones, friends, so hopefully some sunshine. Um, our next meeting will be Tuesday, August 15th, uh, our, starting at 5.30. Um, check the municipal meetings calendar to be sure, but that's the current date. 
Um, so with that, I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, everybody.